In my first one to three years of university, I cared about the university learning experience. I cared about studying, about exams, about homework, about sitting in front of the lecturer as they were presenting new information. And because I cared, the result was that I did quite well. But contrast this with my final semester at university, in which I had absolutely no motivation to study. I didn't enjoy studying, I didn't enjoy exams, nor assignments. I would start homework the day it was due, and my procrastination was at an all-time high. Using the Pomodoro technique did not work for me, I did not use any to-do lists, and any other conventional productivity advice was thrown out the window, simply did not work for me. And yet, at the end of my degree, I graduated with honors research in my biology degree, a minor in computer science, Latin honors, and was placed on the dean's list. And so the question here is how do we get through school or university without any motivation and how do we succeed at something that we feel very little eagerness about? Maybe something of which we dread the process a little bit. Firstly is to leverage shame as a tool. The shame that I'm talking about here doesn't necessarily have to be real. Shame can be imagined, but it needs to be probable enough that it pushes me or you to make a decent effort at whatever we're struggling with. And for this, shame can come in two forms. It can be me being ashamed of myself at my performance, or it can be me being embarrassed or ashamed of myself because I'm facing someone who is more knowledgeable than me, more intelligent, more experienced, someone who I respect, and most importantly, someone who knows how I failed, or at least achieved below my standards of performance. And to raise the stakes, if you will, this is someone who you know cares about people who make a decent effort at the subject, who you know cares when someone is actually trying. This is someone who will not make you feel bad for asking questions in a genuine attempt to understand the topic. And it is also someone who you will feel a little bit uncomfortable with in facing or visiting if they know you have been uh, not making an honest effort and been falling behind in the course or been failing. Another angle that you might take this is someone that you want to impress someone who you want to build a reputation with in which case they would think of you as oh that student knows what they're talking about that student studied secondly we want to be absolutely selfish in our selection of instructors which basically means that we should be picking the best possible instructors for each subject that we can take i'll give you just a couple of examples one in the social sciences and another in the sciences. Just let's compare two history professors I had. One would provide books, lecture notes, and video documentaries related to the topic we were learning. And during lecture, they would basically speak from heart. And in contrast, there was this other history, history professor who would read word for word the PowerPoint and read word for word a chapter extract from a chapter we had been assigned to read that week. And on the science side, the third piece of advice I have is to make a genuine connection with the instructor, especially if they are the type to care for students who are making an honest effort to do well. I cannot emphasize this point enough. This was the most important part because it contributed to how much I actually cared about the course and consequently how much I actually cared about doing well. Because once I cared, then it felt good to put in the effort, the amount of work and time and energy in order to do well. Quite honestly, especially in my first years of university, I would spend more time in professor office hours than I would with people my own age. I mean, I don't have many friends or didn't have many friends to start off with, but that's a different story. But there I would be in their office hours building connections with these instructors of chemistry, discrete math, calculus, and I came to really enjoy the process because it was a way in which I could communicate with someone who knew more than I did, who was more experienced in the subject, and it was like 
private tutoring or maybe at most small group tutoring if other students decide to join those hours. And this all combined very nicely because the more I spent in office hours asking the right questions, then the better I would understand the subject and in turn that would be basically a positive feedback loop, enjoy the subject more, do better, enjoy it more, and so on. Now, this video wouldn't be complete if I did not mention, at least in small part, feelings. Because after all, this is a video about lack of motivation in completing university. So with feelings, I believe that there are some that can be ignored, some that can be acknowledged, and some that should be leveraged. Now, feelings that should be more or less ignored, even though it might be a challenge to do so, are the disinterest, the feeling of wanting to find reasons why it's a subject that is pretty useless, and also the feeling of wasting our time in a subject. Now, feelings that should be acknowledged are exhaustion and lack of motivation. And then feelings that can be leveraged are when we feel a sense of competition, of wanting to prove someone wrong, of fear, of recognition, of wanting to be recognized, and also selfishness. And I have one last feeling that I like to leverage, and this is the feeling that we get when we're listening to good music, and that music is helping us enter a state of flow while we're working. This is really useful for staying focused on the task. Now, if all else fails, go for the bare minimum. Now, for those of you watching the video, bare minimum might be equated to failure, but bare minimum in my context of success just means do good enough. And maybe at that point in time, it's the best you can do. Because in the context of reality, nobody actually cares much about your grades besides yourself and maybe your parents. In other words, grades and GPA tend to have a very limited lifespan. That is, they're good for when you want to get a grant or scholarship, um, get into graduate school, but beyond that, they go unacknowledged. For example, I have never had someone ask in an interview, at a job interview, whether I got good grades or not. Efforts and connections with people matter much more. Grades are going to be irrelevant if your plumbing bursts and you start to see a flood in your kitchen, or if you're driving around and you get a flat tire. The connections with people are going to be what matter at that point. And with that, I leave you with one final thought. Knowledge which is acquired under compulsion obtains no hold on the mind. 